Welcome to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we are broadcasting live on July 23rd from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And there's so much news to talk about this week that we're going to let you weigh in later in the show about the race for president. Over the weekend, as you know, President Biden dropped out of the election and endorsed Kamala Harris to be the Democratic presidential nominee. I'm wondering what people think about that. So I hope you stay tuned and get we'll get your thoughts organized and we'll go to the phones later in the show. First up, though, we're going to talk about one of the biggest local stories of the year. A major redevelopment project was approved by the St. Petersburg City Council on Thursday. It will reshape the historic gas plant district, and the centerpiece will be a new stadium for Major League Baseball's Tampa Bay Rays. Everyone has thoughts about that as well, so you can drop us a line at dj at wmnf.org. You can text 813-433-0885, and I'll read the best comments on the air. And our guest to talk about this this hour is St. Petersburg City Council member Richie Floyd. He was one of three council members who voted against the deal, and we're going to find out why. So welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Richie. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad you could come on. You know, before we get started talking about the Rays Stadium deal, the de redevelopment of the TROP site, maybe I should ask you what your thoughts are about President Biden dropping out of the race for president in 2024. Would you like to share your thoughts? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it came as a bit of a surprise, although not completely. There had been reporting earlier in the week that it was possible. Um, but, you know, uh, I guess the first thing I'd say is uh, I'm a millennial. I'm 32. And uh, there's jokes on the Internet that people my age make about just wishing we could live in precedented times instead of always unprecedented times. And so sort of just goes to that sentiment that, you know, the world is uh, changing right now and different things are happening. And so uh, big news events uh, seem to be the norm. And, you know, as far as the actual decision Joe Biden made to drop out, uh, I definitely understand. Uh, I watched the debate the same as everyone else did. Um, and, you know, the debate wasn't a huge surprise to me. If you've been following the news, he's taken a step back uh, over the last few years. And so uh, it wasn't a huge surprise uh, really in that light. And uh, I think, you know, it was a decision that he had to make in the end because the primary was already over. And so he made it. And it looks like Kamala Harris will be in line to be the nominee for the Democratic Party. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah. So uh, I saw this morning that it looks like a majority of delegates pledged to her. And so that sounds like uh, she'll win on the first ballot at the Democratic Convention. Uh, I think it's something that the Democratic Party desperately needed, uh, as you can see from uh, the excitement when it comes to fundraising. Uh, they had the best small dollar fundraising day in the history of uh, campaign fundraising. Uh, some energy was definitely needed on the Democratic side to be able to overcome um, the malaise that had sort of set in and the lack of excitement. And so I'm really looking forward to what the campaigning actually brings since they've raised all this money. Uh, Joe Biden had been spending tons of money in swing states and not making a difference. And so uh, now we'll see a new campaign, a new candidate spending all that money. And I think it'll start to move uh, people and we'll start to have a real conversation about what the country would look like under a completely different president than the two that were running previously. Our guest is St. Petersburg City Council member Richie Floyd. And before we get to talk about the Rays Stadium, maybe I should ask you to remind people what your background is. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what you did before you were a member of St. Pete City Council. Yeah, uh, sure. So before my uh, background is actually in engineering, I uh, have a bachelor's and a master's degree in electrical engineering, and I worked in that field for uh, seven or eight years. Uh, but right before I became a city council member, I actually became a public school teacher. I taught uh, in an engineering magnet program in a public school for a year, uh, a little bit over a year um, through the pandemic. It was a very difficult job. I learned a lot about how uh, kids who go to a Title I school um, uh, live in the world. And it was really eye-opening, most difficult job I've ever had. Uh, and throughout my time as an engineer, and especially as my time as a teacher, I was an activist. I uh, worked on issues. Uh, I was one of the lead volunteer organizers for the Fight for 15 in 2020 and uh, participated in all sorts of local issues as well. 
And so that's kind of how I ended up running for office was my uh, activism that I did in my spare time uh, led me to look for someone to run for my city council member's seat as she was term limited. And uh, I think that looking sort of backfired because it ended up that uh, everyone just insisted that I do it. So um, ran for office, uh, ran a grassroots campaign, raised small dollar donations. Our average donation was about $25, $27. If you're familiar with Bernie, it was very similar to that. Um, had more contributions than uh, every other campaign in the city combined. Um, knocked on like 30,000 doors. Uh, absolutely uh, wore my shoes out and uh, was able to get elected in the end. And so you were one of the three members that voted against the deal last Thursday. Five of your colleagues supported the development deal that was brokered by the Tampa Bay Rays and their development partner, Heinz, to build a city, a new stadium and redevelop the historic gas plant district on about 86 acres near downtown St. Pete. And we'll probably throw in, throw around a lot of numbers during this interview, but let's start to break the costs of this stadium and redevelopment deal down. The total public and private investment is expected to be about six and a half billion dollars. Yeah, I think that's what's been estimated. I can't say for sure uh, the private side, what's actually going to happen there, but uh, the public side is significant. Yeah, and so let's just take the stadium part of this. The stadium itself will cost about $1.3 billion, and the Rays will contribute $700 million to their own stadium. That means that there's a lot that the public has to make up, including the taxpayers of St. Petersburg. Uh, how would you break that down for us? So, you know, just to explain the numbers, uh, I think it's uh, about 300 million from the county and 287.5 million from the city. And the city's contribution is coming from a variety of sources, uh, but ultimately it's your tax dollars. And uh, that 287.5 million turns into about 500 million when you factor in the interest that we're going to pay on the project over the next 30 years. So yeah, over 30 years, about $500 million from the city. Um, and that's been what my main contention was with the agreement is that, uh, you know, there's no evidence that uh, stadiums are a good investment for cities. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the last study I saw said that people should stop studying the issue because uh, it's settled science. Uh, uh, if you want to create economic impact in a city, you might as well put a Macy's because that's, they have just as much economic impact as a a professional sports stadium does. And so when St. Pete has so many needs uh, and can spend this $500 million, however it pleases, this is not tourist tax dollars. Uh, I just can't justify spending so much money on a baseball stadium. Our guest is St. Petersburg City Council member Richie Floyd. He was one of three city council members to vote against the Rays and Hines deal with the city to build a new stadium and the new redevelopment around what's called the historic gas plant district. And so part of the deal, once this is is finished, and we'll get to the remaining hurdles in a moment, but uh, the Rays will get the ticket sales, the concessions, the naming rights, and the broadcast money for, from through this deal. The city will no longer get a share of ticket sales. So even though the city of St. Petersburg is uh, contributing a lot to to the perch to the uh, construction that is of this new baseball stadium, the city's actually losing out because currently during the deal that ends in 2027, the city gets, I think it's 50 cents per person who goes through the turnstiles. Yeah. In this new agreement, uh, we get absolutely no revenue at all. Uh, zero revenue from the stadium, zero revenue from tickets, parking. We don't even get to name the stadium uh, and, and we don't get the money from naming the stadium, even though it's publicly owned. And so uh, that's been a big contention for a lot of people. Uh, there's no revenue sharing. We're putting money in and nothing's coming back to us. And so when you focus specifically on the stadium, uh, it's a big, big issue. And, you know, there's a broader development around it, but there's no reason we couldn't get a broader development around it without subsidizing the stadium. And so uh, that's that's been what uh, a lot of people have been upset about and continue to uh, point out uh, throughout this process. 
And you're a critic, and so I want to let other voices come into this conversation. Our reporter, Chris Young, uh, reported on this story the other day. So let's hear his minute-long story, uh, and we'll hear some reaction from Mayor Ken Welch, who was very excited about this deal. So here is uh, our reporter, Chris Young, uh, his story from last Thursday after the vote. Members of the audience applauded after the vote was made. St. Pete Mayor Ken Welch, who grew up in the historic gas plant district, is a big supporter of the deal. As to the stadium agreement, far from being an unreasonable subsidy or giveaway, it is a major win for our city. The vote came after an hours-long workshop with the city council on Tuesday. There, city administration fielded questions on topics ranging from the stadium's sustainability to affordable housing in the district. Public commenters had mixed feelings about the deal. Member Richie Floyd explained why he voted against the deal. Hundreds of millions of dollars for a stadium is not in the public's interest. And every community benefit in this agreement is a literal crumb compared to the money that we are spending on the stadium. But City Council Chair Deborah Fig Sanders says she supports the deal, but still wants there to be oversight. And I'm still going to hold us accountable on the city level to ensure that this is going to be one of the greatest deals that the city of St. Petersburg has ever seen come to fruition. The Pinellas County Commission is scheduled to vote July 30th. Chris Young, WMNF News. So there we have it. We heard that the mayor is really happy. Some of the city council members like Deborah Fig Sanders, very happy. They're saying it's a great day for St. Petersburg. Uh, this development will change the city in a good way. And then we heard, of course, your criticism that that the stadium subsidy might not be the best way to go. Um, so, you know, uh, it, can you see any upside? I mean, it looks like this is moving forward. It's going to happen. Um, are you? You know, is there is there an upside to this or what can people kind of be vigilant about to to make sure that things are going in the right direction? So there's two parts of this. Uh, one is there's a stadium agreement and the other part is there's a broader development. Uh, I have no problem with there being a broader de broader development. As a matter of fact, I think we need a broader development. The way the land is uh, put out in our city right now, just a large parking lot that's empty most of the time is not in our city's best interest. Uh, my contention this whole time has been we can get the broader development without the stadium. Well, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't successful in uh, arguing that before the rest of city council, but we are going to get a broader development. And that broader development could have really positive impacts on the city outside of the stadium money. And so uh, I definitely want people to pay attention to that because there was another agreement that we haven't touched on yet that's laid out what we were going to get in the development that comes around the stadium. And there's some pitfalls to it for sure. Uh, you know, we need to make sure that we're actually getting the things that were promised in it, the affordable housing, uh, the jobs, uh, the green space. And so that's where our fight still lies going ahead. Uh, it's gonna be difficult because we laid out the terms of it already, but uh, significant oversight by city council and the city itself uh, will go a long way to making sure that we actually get what we were promised there. and. I think that's where the battle is, and that's where good things could happen, and we'll just have to see. What's the bare minimum, I guess, for the requirement for the for Heinz and the Rays to build out affordable housing in this area? I've I've heard some critics say that well, there's there are some ways that they can get out of it. Let's say weasel out of it, perhaps um, by you know just paying fines to not get enough affordable housing, but. What's kind of the bare minimum and then what would be an optimal amount of affordable housing in this area? So unfortunately, um, I think that the conversation around uh, what the fines they have to pay to get out of it has been uh, misdirected in that there's no affordable housing laid out in this deal. All this deal does is say, uh, you know, the developer hopes to create this kind of affordable housing and they will create it if they are successful in receiving more subsidies from local state and federal sources. And so if we can't afford to give them more subsidy and they're unsuccessful in getting subsidies from other state uh, and federal sources, then the affordable housing doesn't have to be built at all. And so that has been my biggest contention around the broader development is that uh, they promised us uh, 
I think 600 units of affordable housing. Uh, there gets to be this uh, misnomer around affordable and workforce housing. Workforce housing is not affordable. A two bedroom apartment at workforce housing rates is $2,500 a month. Two and a half times what you know a typical mortgage is for someone who bought a house five years ago. And so uh, when it comes down to just affordable housing, it's 600 units and only 200 of them on site. And uh, there's ways for them to get out of it if we don't give them more subsidies. And so, yeah, I think the conversation hasn't actually been sharp enough on that particular issue. Uh, you know, my hope is that we can create enough pressure to force them to do the right thing, uh, regardless of subsidy. Uh, but it's going to be a battle because of the way the documents lined out, uh, laid out. Our guest is St. Petersburg City Council member Richie Floyd, and we're talking about Thursday's vote that approved the redevelopment of the historic gas plant district that includes a new stadium for the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm Sean Canan, and this is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. We're live on July 23rd, and if you'd like to weigh in by sending us an email, you can do it at dj at wmnf.org. You can text us at 813-433-0885. And later on in the show, we're going to take your phone calls to find out what you think about the latest developments in national politics with President Joe Biden dropping out of the presidential race. Uh, right now, we're talking about the, the race stadium deal and uh, what that means for the city of St. Petersburg. So it's uh, in addition to the stadium, the the uh, city, St. Pete, has to also pay for infrastructure, about $142 million for roads, sewers, and other infrastructure in and around this development. Um, so does that mean that there's some sort of um, uh, choice that, this, that the city makes in, how it, in, in what it uses that money for, or is it just kind of all laid out in the development that it has to go for these roads and, and things just to service the stadium and this historic gas plant district, Richie? Yeah. So, yeah, as of right now, that 142 million, uh, it's not been earmarked for specific projects within the development, but it is for the development. And so uh, as time goes on, we'll see uh, the developer actually doing the work uh, and they get to draw down a bank account that we basically filled with that money for them. Uh, and we will soon fill that money for them and they will just be able to draw down on it to build the actual infrastructure. Uh, to city standards and you know there's other subsidies in there as well the interest on the bank account goes directly to them it doesn't go back to the city um you know we had talked about 130 million and then at the last uh in the last few months it got moved up to 142 so uh, there's some details there to be worked out i actually think one of the most important aspects of it to know uh for the public to know is the money that the city's expending uh, is what gets is is outlaid first. So it might not be spent first, but we are going to give the money to them immediately, and then there's no getting it back at that point. So we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, I'm optimistic now at this point uh, because I have to be that everything will go smoothly. But we expend our funds for the stadium for the infrastructure, and then they have to build and. Uh, our funds are gone at that point. And so if there's some issues, uh, you know, we're going to have a tough time coming to terms with it. There's some rules around the infrastructure money that we could then reallocate it to a different in infrastructure in the city, but it's spent at that point. And the, some of the money that's going to be going toward this stadium and redevelopment project is by extending the in-town CRA. So let our listeners know what the CRA is, where the geographical boundaries of this in-town CRA are, and uh, what it means to extend this. It was not going to be forever, was it? No. So the in-town CRA, uh, it's also called a tax increment financing district. Um is basically an imaginary line drawn around downtown. And so uh, downtown area, including the Tropicana Field area, are within this bubble. And in that bubble, when you do a tax increment financing district or district or a community redevelopment area, what happens is all of the taxes that get collected there, uh, starting when the bubble's drawn, all the new taxes that get collected there stay in that area. They have to. And so in the 80s, they did this because they wanted to cre create a fund to invest in downtown, to get downtown to, uh, 
become more vibrant. And so uh, it's technically used for blighted areas. It was extended once. It's supposed to only last for 30 years. And it was extended once to 2032 uh, so that they could continue to draw upon it and invest in downtown. Well, we just extended it again to 2042. And this was actually uh, one of the things that I think wasn't highlighted a lot, uh, but was really impactful. And I really disagreed with. Downtown is not a blighted area. It's the most wealthy area of our entire city. If you've ever looked out into your neighborhood and been like, wow, we really need investments in our infrastructure here. There's flooding. The roads are crumbling. Uh, we don't have as many nice things as the nicest area in the city downtown. Uh, part of that reason is because we're trapping the area with the most wealth. We're trapping all that wealth in that area. And it was a huge, I, I just don't find it just at all that we would uh, continue to invest in an area that already has so much when our neighborhoods need so much more investment. And I was really optimistic that we would be able to end the CRA district ahead of time. And uh, when this deal got rolled out and they said, we're going to extend it, it was very frustrating for me. And I know very frustrating for a lot of community activists who want to see our entire city thrive and not just downtown where there's condos and high rises that, to be honest, aren't for people like me. I can't afford to live there um and no one i know can afford to live there and so uh it's been very frustrating another concerning issue has to do with where the the parking lots are at the trop right now which is where the new stadium will be built just east that is of the tropicana field there are suspected or possible cemeteries there what do we know about what might be underneath the parking lot of tropicana field yeah, I think you described it accurately. Like it's it's suspected that there are cemeteries there, and and I think uh, you could maybe take it another step and say it's it's expected to find uh, some evidence of that. And so uh, the agreement does lay out uh, that due diligence has to be done, um, not only to check, but then to uh, handle it appropriately. And so um, there will be, uh, I think, I can't speak exactly to the science of it. But there will be um, efforts made to go and examine what's underneath the parking lots before we uh, continue to do the building and uh, either relocate or honor those who were buried there in some way. And so I do think that uh, was something that was absolutely necessary to get put into the agreement, and I was glad to see. Another thing that's in the agreement is that the Rays and Hines will contribute $10 million toward an Woodson African American Museum. Um, but the price of that museum is expected to be a lot more than that. So where would the rest of the funds come from? So the rest of the funds will have to come from a fundraising effort by the museum itself. Uh, in the agreement with Rays and Hines, they did say uh, that they will help uh fundraise for it. They'll provide contacts and whatnot. Uh, and so hopefully that means we'll get the museum um, as early as possible. And, you know, my contention with this whole agreement is I, it's great that we're going to have a museum. It's great that we're going to have this green space. Uh, it's great that we're going to get, hopefully, some affordable housing. Um, but like I've said before, and I'll say again, all of those things combined are a fraction of what we're going to spend on a baseball stadium. A baseball stadium that's own, that's going to be run by a billionaire and um, not going to return any revenue to the city, that stadium could be paid for with private funds and we could spend our money actually getting things instead of feeling like we're gambling to get a museum. We could just have bought a museum. And so uh, that's where my contention has been this whole time. I am optimistic that we will... Um, get the things that we've said we're going to get, particularly the museum. Um, but it's going to require work from people in the city still. The Southern Poverty Law Center had kind of threatened to say that if this deal does go through, if there is a stadium built, that there will be civil rights violations and that, uh, that they could end up taking legal action to prevent something like that. What do you know about the possibility of that happening and what their concerns are? Uh, I did read their letter. It sounds like their argument is that uh, there was civil rights violations done whenever we originally built the stadium. Uh, we bought the uh, bought the houses in the area 
with funds that were supposed to be spent on social goods, uh, block grants from the federal government that are supposed to go towards um, lifting people out of poverty, um, assistance to the poor. And instead, we bought that land with those funds and then built a baseball stadium, which was a civil rights violation. And that the continued use of the land as a baseball stadium, and now this agreement to uh, sell the land to a private entity for way under market value and continue to use uh, a piece of it for a baseball stadium is a continued civil rights violation. And so um, that's the way I understand what they're saying. Um, I think uh, I follow their logic. And so I don't know it. I can't comment on whether or not someone's going to take legal action against the city. I really don't know. Um, but uh, it's possible that they do in the future if they feel so inclined. And you mentioned that the that we're selling that we that the city is selling the land for under value. What do we know about how much the land was sold for and how much it might be worth? So there was an appraisal a couple of years ago uh, that said the land was worth 279 million and we ended up selling it for about 100 million. That was a problem in and of itself, but I think there has been evidence since uh, land downtown selling for 14 to 20 million dollars an acre and we sold this land for a fraction of that and even the appraisal uh, was only for a couple million dollars an acre, a few million dollars an acre. And so, uh, you know, there's an argument to be made that if it was to sell for the same price as downtown, it could be worth as much as 500 to 800 million dollars. Uh, and we sold it for only 100 million. And I think, yeah, along with the stadium subsidy, that is an absolutely huge problem. And that's why I've been describing this whole agreement as a large transfer of wealth from the private sector, from the public sector to the private sector. It's uh, that's why I've been using the word subsidy, using the words corporate welfare. Uh, and unfortunately, this is par for the course in a lot of cities when it comes to sports developments. And uh, I'm not just one lone voice saying this is no, this is not good. There was other council members, but there's a whole movement across the country of people saying uh, we're not interested in subsidizing things this way anymore. And I think things are coming to light, but it's still a big battle because to be honest, the sports teams and the corporations that get these deals are heavily involved in uh, campaigning. They donate a lot of money to candidates. Um, they make sure that their people win. And then they give people free sweet tickets afterwards. They do these deals. And so there's a lot of incentive for elected officials uh, to continue to do these kinds of deals. And it's going to take like a, a grassroots movement to push back against it. Richie, I've taken up a lot of your time already, and I, I want to wrap up soon, but I do I am seeing that there's a couple of people on the line that want to talk about the Rays Stadium. Do you have time to take a couple of calls? Yeah, absolutely. I can hang out. All right, great. Well, thanks so much. Uh, so I want to remind people that our guest is St. Petersburg City Council Member Richie Floyd, and we're talking about Thursday's vote approving the redevelopment of the historic gas plant district that includes a new stadium for the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm Sean Canan, and this is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. We're taking phone calls now live on July 23rd, and on the line right now is Connie in Tampa. Hi, Connie. Welcome to the show. Thank you, and I want to thank the uh, councilman for his courage and leadership. And what you see, even with uh, the layout of these CRAs that's supposed to help redevelop impoverished communities, uh, the hijacking of them, how they become a new form of redlining. And so no, uh, the workforce housing, the affordable housing, housing for poor people, irregardless if it's Tampa or St. Petersburg, the leadership, the absolute leadership that is primarily led by the Democratic Party is so, so disappointing. But I want to thank him for his leadership and his effort. Thank you. Thanks for the call, Connie. Thank you. Um, she called it a new form of redlining. Is that, uh, and is that how you might describe it as well? You know, that's strong language, but I can't disagree for the most part. Um, it's not trapping people out or in uh, by race the way redlining did, but it's trapping people out and in uh, by uh, class for sure. Uh, working class people, I mentioned it before, cannot afford to live downtown. Uh, it's become prohibitively, prohibitively expensive for us to even develop downtown, uh, for us to develop 
um, affordable housing downtown uh, to the point where we're having to look elsewhere. And, you know, that's not a just thing to do. And it, it's become prohibitively expensive because of all the money that we've pumped into the area that could be going towards other places. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I think that there's definitely a relevant analogy there. And before we go to this next phone call, which might be the last one we talk about the the raise, I want to remind people that we're going to open up the phones in just a few seconds to talk about all the news that's happening in national politics. So if you'd like to get in the queue right now, you can call in at 813-239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org like Peter has already done, or you can text us at 813 813- 813-433-0885 in about uh, two or three. Oh, you know, we had somebody drop off the line. So um, we'll we'll open up the phone lines in just a second, I promise. But uh, let me ask Richie the last question I had for him, and that's the next steps for this project. It's going to go to the Pinellas County Commission for a vote. Uh, they could vote as soon as next Tuesday. I haven't heard any news about whether that will or won't be delayed yet. And and the subsidies continue. The Pinellas County is going to vote on contributing $312 million from the tourist tax. So um, if if there are any Pinellas County commissioners listening to this or can get word from, what would be your advice to them? What should they be looking for in this contract? And whether you think that this is a good deal for Pinellas County taxpayers, Richie? So the county's version of this agreement is much more simple than the city's. Uh, it's basically just, here's $312 million, build a stadium. Uh, there's no information about what gets built around it. Um, they do have uh, a little bit of money coming back to them in the form of like a million dollars a year or something like that uh, for a lease agreement. And uh, ultimately, though, it ends up being about $300 million expended over the next 30 years, uh, depending on how they do their bonds uh, and what their down payment is, it's going to be a lot more money than that. And it comes from tourist tax dollars, which must be spent on uh, tourist issues. And so it's a much more simple conversation. But I would definitely encourage county commissioners to still think deeply about if this is the right thing to use tax dollars on. Uh, those tax dollars come from people staying in hotels. Uh, and hotels are... Uh, used by people who are coming to visit the area and not a lot of people actually come to visit the area for baseball. I think it's, uh, something like, uh, I actually don't know, uh, where it falls on the list, but the highest things on the list are, you know, the Dolly museum, the, uh, St. Pete pier, the beaches. Those are things people actually come here for baseball is much lower down on the list. And so definitely evaluate if you think this is the best thing to actually increase tourism in the city. One, uh, in the county, one. And two, I would really encourage county commissioners to get more creative about how they spend these dollars. Uh, there's an argument to be made, and I know the county hasn't wanted to make it, but other places have, that you can spend it on infrastructure and transit that supports uh, tourism-related projects. Uh, and you can definitely spend it on revenue-generating tourism projects. So projects that actually give money back to the county uh, and right now they're choosing to do one that's not revenue generating. And so I definitely think they should think deeply about it, not just this project, but how they use tourism money in the future completely. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Richie. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, I always enjoy it. Thanks. I'm glad you could come on. Richie Floyd is a St. Petersburg City Council member. He voted against approving the contracts between the city of St. Pete and the Tampa Bay Rays that approved a new baseball stadium in the historic gas plant district redevelopment. This is Tuesday Cafe. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF Tampa, and we're live on the 23rd of July.